what do we want to say about a brand new company who's producing an opera for the first time? Are we a company that's really looking at producing a traditional operatic repertoire with a traditional take on it? Are we interested in doing something that's, uh, let's say, much more European or modern and conceptual? Uh, a Carmen that is costumed like Planets of the Apes playing tennis on the moon? Or are we somewhere in between that? Who are we as a company? that Jerry was really receptive to uh, the modern imagery while wanting to have a, uh, a sense of style that meant that what we were really paying attention to was the text and the music and the characterization. So that's a long way of saying this is not uh, a European house producing the Planet of the Apes version. Um, <laughs> what it means is I went to the drawing board with my design team and said, what is the music telling us? What is the text telling us? Um, and where do we think this period, uh, this, sorry, this piece that sits within history, what period do we want to put it in? One of our key challenges in um, creating this Carmen too is also worth talking about the space itself. Um, this was a house in which we had to get very creative about how we would stage the space with this massive uh, chorus and all the players entailed. And we decided to fix some things in space and then per act move different things through the environment. So it really is an environmental design. Uh, Rose, we call it the rose theme portal. It's a steel frame, see? <laughs> steel frame piece with um, a lumber component that's cut out um, with a CNC router. This actually is a piece that was built by the University of Rochester and we um, subcontracted the CNC panels to be cut from another vendor. And so this was all shipped in, assembled here, and um, it becomes a permanent uh, fixed piece through the entire show. We had decided, uh, when we looked at the theater itself, before we had really done any uh, conceptual drawings specific to Carmen, uh, is looking at the space and seeing what kind of world could fit within the theater itself. And it's really what I would dub uh, maybe a jewel box kind of theater or a jewel box space, which meant that we're looking at doing an opera that has four uh, vastly different acts uh, that are set in four different locations. So we needed some units and some elements that maintained themselves through each of those four acts and others that were specific to each act. With the units that maintained themselves throughout the course of the evening, we wanted things that were thematic not only to Spain, but also to the characters of the opera. And Laura was really quick to uh, bring up some ideas and some themes that Carmen works with a lot. Uh, casting a rose at José in her habanera, uh, setting a spell on him through that rose, and really following and tracking that development throughout the course of the piece and thus her vision led her to this rose portal, which is just one of the many elements that we see throughout the evening. Things that we looked at uh, from act to act is a way to really differentiate what is essentially one space over the course of four acts. And what you're seeing uh, behind myself and Laura right now is our act four bull drape. Uh, and essentially what happens when we finish act three is the stage clears and it uh, is empty of cast and other scenic units. And with the downbeat of act four, all of a sudden this bull drape appears from the ceiling uh, or from the fly rail. And in our terms, what that means is we wanted uh, a, a piece of set that could appear magically um, and really instantly say that we were outside a bull ring in Sevilla.